like NATO itself. Theirs is an exercise in reassurance, aimed at European allies jittery about Russia. Soon, there will be four more battalions on Russia's border to act as a deterrent. How jarring, then, for the jittery to hear non-committal words like this. Either they pay up, including for past deficiencies, or they have to get out. And if it breaks up NATO, it breaks up NATO. Odd to watch Donald Trump's campaign flirtations with Russia's Vladimir Putin. When people like me, I like them. And now to hear word from Moscow that their officials were in touch even during the campaign, though Trump repeatedly denied it. No surprise, the NATO chief was one of the first to offer congratulations to Trump, along with a reminder. A strong NATO is good for the United States, and it is good for Europe. The concern is that a Russia-friendly U.S. president might weaken the response to Russia's military buildup and its actions in Ukraine, that a reset with Putin gives him a freer hand. They do not... Don't forget, it was a campaign. But Trump's position on NATO did seem to evolve, that he thought it obsolete only because it wasn't involved in counterterrorism. And when he learned it had become involved, he took the credit. He's far from wanting to abandon the alliance, says this analyst, but he still sounds more isolationist than the average U.S. president. So to some extent, he is more ready to say, if this is, isn't in our direct national interest, this isn't my problem. This is somebody else's problem. So what does it all mean for NATO's immediate plans? One NATO official told us the deployments agreed to by the leaders will go ahead. A Canadian official said it's business as usual, but they're watching. Trump is expected to represent the U.S. at NATO's next summit in the spring. He may meet Putin first. He did once say that he could see that meeting happening even before his inauguration. Nala Ayed, CBC News, London.